Good evening, everybody. Everybody. Welcome to the workshop for Oops. the 2015 budget. This will be um, Tom Hall will be presenting. Um, we have Councillor St. Clair, Blaze, Benedict, myself, Holbrook, Katarina, and Bill Donovan. And we'll go ahead and let you run with the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight is um, provide a couple of introductory comments first. Um, I do have a slideshow that will provide some very fairly high uh, level detail of the budget and then spend some time to orient you to the budget documents that I've put in front of you this evening. Uh, for those new on council, this might be a, a, it's your first opportunity to kind of see the document uh, all together. Um, and then uh, I'm certainly available for questions if, if you wish. So a couple of the introductory comments off the top. Um, it seems like the budget process has never stopped. Uh, last year, many of us may recall, the budget process went late, and a lot of that was driven by the state budget process, which, as I recall, didn't wrap up until the, f you know, the final days of June. Uh, and I think we went to the, the voters uh, several times, perhaps three times, ultimately. Uh, and then immediately following that, I commend the Finance Committee last year. We took, uh, I think, uh, the better part of the summer three or four or five meetings over the summer months and early fall to meet in detail with departments. And I thought that was a really wise move of the Finance Committee to have some uh, higher level conversation with major key departments, the big, uh, the big cost centers, if you will, in the town, outside of the budget pressures uh, and, and the focus of a budget and needing to get a document through the process. And I found that, and I think staff found that as a rewarding experience, and I think there were some good uh, things that came out of that. Uh, many of those documents uh, will have been available, <coughs> made available again to the new finance committee and I think will be referred to as you go through the process this year. So um, that took us through the midpoint of fall and then quite honestly uh, at that point departments are working in earnest putting their budgets together uh, and then here we are. Uh, it happens in a wink of an eye almost it seems. Um, this year particularly seemed uh, to have no break. Uh, but it's interesting, I stand before you, this is the first time in my, uh, during my tenure with Scarborough that we seem to see some different trends this year, um, particularly on the revenue side. The story that I've continually stood at this podium and, and uh, talked to the council and the public about is uh, kind of this uh, ongoing trend of, of ever decreasing revenues from the state. And I can't say they've rebounded back to where they were, but at least the free fall has stopped. And, for that, I'm, I'm very thankful. It gives us some level of predictability and certainty in our process, which we've been lacking. And um, that's been a real challenge for us. On the expenditure side, I, what you're going to see as we go into the budget uh, somewhat tonight, and certainly as we go into it in detail, uh, at least on the town side, and I think this is true of the school as well, we're really looking to uh, get back on track on our staffing plans, on kind of restoring programs and, and vision and, and focus for the town. Uh, that almost by definition requires investment. And unlike past years when we've had some real challenging times, and I'm not at all dismissing our challenges before us today, really after cons consultation with the Finance Committee, um, interested in bringing forward uh, a number of new positions on the town side, uh, really to spur def a dis good deep discussion <coughs> with the Finance Committee, and also to allow my staff the opportunity to <coughs> present to you and, and defend their budgets. Um, and so that's, that's something new and different for me. Many times my red pen is out and you never even see the position that's asked by the department uh, because I've taken it out before you see it. So I fully expect there to be certainly good, deep, rich discussion. I don't expect all those positions will survive necessarily, but I think it's important for us to have that conversation and for you to appreciate that the departments have, uh, I think, very good justification for their, um, their requests. So needless to say, this budget uh, doesn't meet the goal of the council, uh, but I think it's a very good starting point, and that's what I encourage us all to, to treat this as. Um, I must just relate a kind of a personal note. I think this is my 21st budget I've done, and they don't get any easier. And I continually, this time of year, feel as though I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders, that this is all my problem. And under, certainly I'm the architect of it, and I would like to think I play a key role in kind of getting us through this process, but this is a collective process, and that's really what I want to um, engender and, and foster with the council. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into the, the presentation I have available here. 
So let's start at the outset. Uh, this is a guiding principle that I have certainly kept, been mindful of and passed it on to my staff. The council adopted a budget goal back in late January and it had uh, five basic components. Uh, conservative assumptions, let's plan for the worst. At that time, municipal revenue sharing was very much in jeopardy. That issue, had, we've seemed to have sidestepped that, at least for the time being. Uh, the other part of that is advocate for Scarborough with the legislature. I think, frankly, you as the town council uh, really were ab admirable in terms of taking a stand, talking to your local legislators, engaging them, and I think all of that mattered greatly, and particularly in terms of um, uh, uh, municipal revenue sharing this time around, but I assure you we're going to need that same sort of steadfast solidarity uh, on other, sh other issues that come down the road. The other uh, component of the goal was uh, to review fees and fines, and you'll see as part of this budget uh, the fee schedule is before you. There's a number of fee suggested fee increases, and staff can justify uh, those as we go through the process, and we've scrutinized all the fees as well. Flat funding. Um, for the on the spending side and certainly establishing a stable tax rate uh, is another laudable goal that uh, the council has established and just the, keeping being mindful of the concept of capital budgeting its importance and its effect on the budget I think mm -hmm. so quickly by way of process obviously the presentation is tonight um, the we're now entering what I'll call the review phase. Uh, the school has its own process. I believe they have a workshop. I don't have the date of that, but it's a workshop I think you're all invited, for, invited to. Uh, it's a bit of a retreat setting, if you will. Uh, beyond that, there's a joint workshop that the school board and council have, have scheduled as well. On the town side, uh, many of the detailed review discussions have been relegated to the Finance Committee. And the Finance Committee has established four meetings, essentially, every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. in these chambers um, for the month of April. And departments are already scheduled to appear before you in kind of time slots to make sure that we have, everyone has their opportunity. And the final <coughs> meeting, April 22nd, is open at this point. So no departments are assigned. It's really uh, recognizes the need of the Finance Committee to digest what they've heard and to have internal deliber deliberations, perhaps invite other uh, folks back in if you wish. Uh, but there's an open date on the back end of this to allow the Finance Committee to complete its work. <clears throat> In the big picture, this uh, graph just shows you the basic breakdown of how the budget looks. The top pie chart is the gross budget. I know it's very hard to see. Um, all of this information will be online and certainly in your budget books as well. Um, the bottom one is the net budget. So the net obviously takes into consideration all sources of non-property tax revenue. And that's really probably the most important one because that, it's, it's, those, it's those financial needs that property taxes and tax rate is based on. And on the net budget, the school represents 66% of the pie, the town 30%, and the county 4 Now I should note for the school's purpose, Clearly, if you look at the gross budget, they're the biggest spender, 56%. But they also have the least re uh, opportunity for non-property tax revenue. They're really limited to just a handful of outside sources. Uh, state aid education, they've instituted some activity fees and parking fees. Um, those smaller fees don't amount to all that much in the end. So I, I just want to caution, uh, I'm not criticizing them, but they're severely limited in terms of how they can raise money to support their cause short of local property taxation. On the town side, a quick look, um, actually this is total budget, excuse me, a uh, quick look on gross expenditures. So I've broken out the three major categories, municipal, education, and county. And I've simply provided the current budget um, as compared to the proposed budget. And you'll <coughs> see in the town side, Spending is projected to go up 4.9 percent, education 10.68, and county 7.4 for a grand total town-wide uh, expenditure increase of 8.3 percent. We'll get into detail a bit further first on the town side. And I've, I've represented this graph showing kind of broad categories. This isn't department by department, for instance. Um, and I can tell you, I have the detail that shows what went into these. 
but this in a quick snapshot just gives you a, a little more uh, detail to, regarding where that spending is occurring. I could talk a lot on each one of these. I, it's probably not the time to do that, and there's certainly more detail uh, within the document, and I expect we'll get into it in great detail. The real drivers, I call them, the expenditure drivers on the town budget, um, and forgive me, the total went away here, um, but the total increase for the town side was about $1.3 million. And this listing of five items represents about $1.2 million of that $1.3. As I mentioned at the outset, a big <coughs> initiative for me is to bring forward new positions, and that's the single largest piece of this increase. And I do expect some change there, but I think it's important to have the conversation. Uh, we've also, thankfully, uh, the, the council funded a pay classification study, which was completed uh, late in the fall. And this includes, this budget includes implementation costs for that pay classification study, and also our contract contractual obligations um, that we know of and others that we're still in negotiation with right now. There's increases in contracted services, Healthcare, we're projecting 10% increase. We hope that's uh, a little rich, but at this juncture, early without definite um, knowledge in that regard, we've been advised that 10% is, is a good number to, to move forward with at this juncture. And then town debt has gone up as well. Again, these four categories represent over 90% of the increase on the town side. <clears throat> on the school side, uh, the budget objectives, and I lifted these, uh, this wording from the superintendent's presentation. Uh, their objective is to develop a credible and student-centered budget that accomplishes three things. Maintains continuous improvement focus, provides resources needed to achieve uh, the second 18-month improvement plan, and builds upon investments from prior fiscal years. And certainly the superintendent is, can be far more articulate um, uh, regarding each of these objectives, but the, these were guiding principles on the school side. Incidentally, uh, as regards the school, the school is a town department technically. Um, they simply hand me their budget. Uh, I don't see it to be my duty or responsibility whatsoever to modify that. So what I present here and what is in your budget book comes directly from uh, superintendent and the, and the school board as a starting point. Uh, on the school side, this, uh, again, kind of lumps into fairly broad categories, but provides a little more detail as to where, you know, where those uh, expenditures exist in the proposed budget. So you'll see the categories of base expenditures, uh, investments and restorations. Again, these are terminology and categories that the superintendent has put together, uh, something he calls budget adjustments, certainly higher debt service, uh, driven by the Wentworth predominantly and food service. Um, and so they're looking at uh, expenditure increase 4.3 million and change, and that's 10.68% over last year, our current year. Like the town side, I thought it would be helpful just to show you kind of the, the drivers, where, where, what's driving these costs on the school side. And this certainly doesn't um, um, cover the majority of expenses, but you get a sense of uh, some new costs that are shown in their proposed budget. Um, please don't ask me to answer questions about the school uh, uh, charter school tuition, because I can't, uh, but I'm sure the superintendent can. Um, obviously, debt service and health insurance are the two, two big costs uh, that they're contending with next year. <clears throat> Moving on to revenues, this pie chart shows revenues. By far and away, 68% of your revenues are made up through property taxes. That's the piece that we're intensely interested in. Um, smaller amounts, uh, for instance, uh, GPA, this is general purpose aid for education, represents 6% of the overall costs. And then you can see for yourself the, how it breaks down, but obviously, the big piece is the property tax piece. 
for tax revenues, as I said at the outset, uh, it's a bit of a different story this year. We're actually seeing a 12.3 percent increase in property taxes this year. Uh, excuse me, non-property tax tax this year. Let me make sure I correct myself there. Um, in every prior year, that's always been a negative number as I stand before you. This year it's not. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, on the education side, uh, clearly it's driven by the fact that uh, the bleeding has stopped on the general purpose aid, at least for this year. There's no guarantees going forward. And in fact, we see a little bump, uh, significant bump in support to education that the school is, in, is looking to enjoy. And on the town side, it's really driven by a couple things. Um, one, I'll say, um, driven by the economy. We, we do see some uptick in permit revenue and those sorts of uh, revenues. Excise tax is another one that's directly tied to the economy. We've seen some positive growth in the current year and expect that will continue. We've also gotten, uh, I think, much better in terms of um, allocating costs. Uh, the town and the school share the uh, IT department, which I think is a terrific model that we ought to emulate and, and frankly, duplicate um, in, other, in other areas. Uh, but we've never been all that exact about apportioning where the costs are. And uh, this year we've actually, uh, I think, done a, an excellent job of that. And the school, though it's showing up as an expense to them and it, it comes out of the taxpayer pocket, I appreciate, but at least we're finally reflecting where um, uh, the cost should be borne. And so the town is actually receiving some fairly significant additional revenue to support that because we show the full cost of the IT department on the town side. <clears throat> and just some detail, I, sh I guess I got ahead of myself. So you'll see on the school side, GPA makes a big difference. They also propose to use additional fund balance. Um, for a number of years now, they've used $200,000 going forward every year. This year it's 500000 so there's an increase of three hundred, which shows itself in non-property tax revenue. Um, and then on the town side, as I mentioned, excise tax, uh, the reimbursements from not only the school. Uh, I also mentioned Old Orchard Beach. We're currently working with the town of Old Orchard Beach to provide dispatch services to them. They are going through a similar budget process in a similar time frame as us. And should this move forward, we need to be ready to uh, properly staff and be ready to take those calls. Uh, the vast majority, if not all of those costs, are come back to us through a, re a reimbursement situation, and that's why it's shown here. But obviously, it also drives up some of the expense side. Planning and uh, permit and, and fees for the planning department. Uh, reimbursements for public works department. Uh, that's really a function of fuel, parts, and labor as they provide all of the uh, vehicle maintenance for the entire fleet, town and school alike. Um, and, and Mike does a terrific job of uh, billing out, if you will, all of those services to the, to the various departments. And it shows up as revenue in his department. And then recycling revenue, which is something uh, through Eco Maine that I think Mike will speak to when he when he uh, appears before the Finance Committee. <clears throat> Forgive me, I put a lot up here, but uh, for the capital improvement plan, uh, we break it out between capital projects and equipment on the town side, and I've listed kind of the heavy hitters. Uh, we're looking at technology upgrades, maintenance to our fire stations, transportation committee upgrades, uh, many of these um, have been around, or at least discussed, uh, certainly at the committee level, and are now coming forward. Mike is moving forward again on his annual road rehabilitation program. Uh, Pleasant Hill Road is a major challenge over the next couple of uh, budget cycles that we'd like to bring forward to you. And the library is looking at doing, I've characterized it as a, an expansion, it's a very modest expansion to pick up uh, another couple of office spaces to kind of band-aid or bridge to the point of uh, perhaps a, a more el elaborate expansion or um, renovation. And on the equipment side, uh, we do have a, a very detailed equipment replacement schedule that we're uh, trying to get back on track with. Um, so there's a fire truck, engine three pumper replacement, uh, the annual rescue unit replacement, dispatch equipment. This is really tied up with the Old Orchard Beach piece in large respect. 
Uh, there are two plow trucks. And we've also included a town-wide revaluation here. Um, it's probably miscategorized under equipment, but this is something that came up actually in your uh, goals discussion. Uh, the assessor has collected uh, costs, likely costs, for such a, an effort, and we'll be prepared to talk about that uh, with the Finance Committee and the full council. And then finally, on the school, on the school side, they have technology, uh, facilities maintenance, and they're looking at three buses. So you might ask yourself, what does this all mean? Um, the total net budget is uh, proposed to go up 7.17% based on this proposal. And that would require a 99 cent increase, um, almost a dollar increase in the tax rate. And so that new projected mill rate, this is assuming a $15 million increase in value, which is typical. That's typically what we use at this juncture. Would put that tax rate at 1576 per thousand or 6.73% uh, increase. And we also <coughs> calculate what that means for the average taxpayer. It's about a $300 increase in taxes. Now, b believe me, I, the, I don't deliver that news uh, with a smile on my face. I know that falls uh, very short of your uh, goal and expectation. Uh, but again, I think it's a, it's a reasonable starting point, and we'll see where we go from here. This chart just shows uh, the growth of three critical factors, the total valuation of the town, the, the tax commitment, and then the tax rate. Those two first two are the variables that produce the tax rate. So from 2006 up through 14, those are actuals. Obviously, 2015, we've projected uh, what the value will be, what the commitment will be based on my proposed budget and, and, and by product of that, uh, what the likely tax rate would be. And I think of particular note and concern to all of us present is those percentage increases on the tax rate over the last four or five years. And I know this issue doesn't uh, um, fall on deaf ears with this council that that's uh, likely not a sustainable path that we're on. Uh, those five, six, seven percent increases of tax rate year after year after year. year. Um, I think we all appreciate that that's not sustainable long term. And so finally, just to kind of end where we started, we started with what the review schedule was. This is the adoption schedule. In many respects, it runs concurrently with the review, at least parts of it. So for instance, uh, at your next regular public meeting, that's next Wednesday, April 2nd, will be the first reading. Customarily, the council considers my proposed budget and first reading to at least initiate the adoption process. There is a public hearing scheduled for April 16th. We'll be in these chambers at 7 p.m. Uh, I believe that's, uh, that will be the single item on that agenda, if you will. Then there's a joint workshop, and that's scheduled the full council and the school board for April 30th. By then, the Finance Committee um, will have just completed its work and may have some recommendations to share uh, with those with uh, the joint meeting. And that puts the council in a position to consider the budget uh, in second and final reading and therefore adoption on May 7th, all of which points us toward the school validation vote referendum scheduled for May 13th. And incidentally, when we sit down to put the budget adoption schedule together, we always start at the end, in terms of the end date. Um, history suggests that we need to allow some time on the, on the back side, if you will. By charter and state law, we must have a budget passed by the end of June. And so in the event that the school validation vote fails the first or second or third time, be that as it may, we need to have enough time to allow for those uh, multiple uh, t tries at the polls, if you will. So that May 13th date, you know, kind of was the start date, and then everything else fell in behind that. So in a nutshell, that, that's the budget. Um, I do want to take a few moments, as I mentioned, just to orient you to the budget document itself. Incidentally, all of this material will be available online starting sometime mid-morning tomorrow. Colette will be uploading that material uh, as soon as she gets in in the morning. 
And we do always have a couple of public copies in my office should someone want to come in and see a, a paper copy. Uh, but let's just take a few minutes if, if, we, if we could. And uh, I just want to make sure, particularly for the new counselors, uh, they can get their way around the document. Um, right inside the first cover, front cover, you'll see uh, the budget adoption and review schedule, just so everyone can kind of be mindful of those critical dates. Then under tab one, I provide a budget transmittal letter. I really try to synthesize um, and highlight the major players, if you will, in the budget, the high points, if you will. So I do encourage you to take a few moments, uh, read through that. That will at least give you a high-level overview. And I should mention at the tail end, I've attached it as an exhibit. I've included a full listing and kind of a narrative justification for the positions. And I've not done that in the past, largely because I haven't come forward asking for many new positions. But uh, we did uh, take the time to put this together for the Finance Committee, and I've kind of fine-tuned it a bit. And I think it uh, might be helpful just to appreciate uh, why these positions are being asked, uh, asked for. Moving on to tab two, the summary and analysis section. Uh, you'll see summary reports for both, uh, for, for all three major functions, if you will, town, school, and county. You'll notice the, uh, the charts that I had in my presentation are in this section. And then what might be of particular interest is the last three pages of this tab. Uh, the first one I'll draw your attention to is the total tax rate computation page. It is, it, it, this is the page that uh, tends to be of most interest and we'll continually uh, work with this page and work from it as the, as the budget kind of evolves. Uh, but this total one shows um, many of the numbers <coughs> I just reviewed tonight. If you look at the bottom, you'll see the projected tax rate and such. And then the ensuing pages, there's three of them that show the individual, individual components. So we do a similar calculation and presentation for the town, for the school, and for the county. So you can appreciate where the costs are and how they affect the mill rate. Tab three is the revenue section. And you'll see a line item detail of all the different revenue accounts, which will be reviewed by the Finance Committee and full council. And then the final part of this tab is the fee schedule. This is customarily, this is adopted each year as part of the budget approval. And this year, there are a number of proposed fee schedule changes, uh, many of which, uh, to the extent that they make a difference in revenue, they are reflected in the proposed revenues as well. Uh, and you'll see the proposed changes are shown in red, so you can very clearly identify um, what our suggestions are. And staff will be prepared to, to address each of them um, with their respective departments. Tab 4 uh, represents the town expenditures. Again, this provides detailed line item, uh, specific detail of all expenditures. This will likely be the majority of the, the place where the Finance Committee spends its most time behind and in tab four. This is, uh, this is the spending side. Tab five is debt, long-term debt, and also leases. Fairly small number of pages, but lots of money wrapped up in that little section. I suspect will be some point of conversation Tab six is capital equipment, and tab seven is capital projects. Um, you'll note in both of those tabs, we'll provide an overall summary by department. And incidentally, the capital projects uh, plan is a five-year plan, so we do show projected capital projects and expenses over that five-year period. Obviously, a primary focus will be that uh, first year, and that's shown, and, and you'll see as you go further in both equipment and projects, we have detailed narratives uh, in support of each of the, the projects that we're proposing for fiscal year 2015. And in the narrative, uh, you'll probably, I hope you'll note, 
anything with an asterisk is something that's uh, part of this budget proposal. So that's six and seven. And then eight is the school budget. Uh, again, um, provided this and copy it and clip it in. I, I don't claim any ownership or authorship um, of the material here. Uh, I was appreciative this year. They did include their capital projects at the same time. In past years, that's been lagging some weeks after the, my presentation. So at least it's all together for you here, and you'll find that at the tail end. It's the last couple of pages. So forgive me, that was a, a very rapid orientation. Uh, but I think if you look to the index, you should be able to find your way through it uh, fairly easily. And clearly, myself or staff uh, will make ourselves available if anyone needs a little extra attention in understanding what the budget document is and how to read it and how to use it. We'll be pleased to help. Tom, the um, school yes. budget workshop is April 5th. Ah, thank you. Um, at Town Hall, 8.30 to noon. Thank you. So April 5th, I, that's the one I mentioned at the one of the first slides. Um, I think that's fairly new. I think S Superintendent Entwistle is the one who brought that on. Uh, I'm not aware that the town has been terribly involved in the past. Uh, I did attend last year. Last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was very beneficial for me to attend that. Um, kind of gave me... Instead of just for me, just looking at something like this, it kind of gave me some background into some of the things that they were requesting. It helped me understand some of the things that they were requesting. Um, it's a so I would encourage people, any other counselors to attend that. I'll probably actually be at that one again this year. Um, <clears throat> but it was chock full of information. And they do have, um, you know, a lot of their department heads do come in. And just like we, as our group does, they advocate for why they're asking for some of the things that they're asking for. And it, it is a lot of information, but it's good information. So. It would be your opportunity to really hear from the leadership council and leadership staff as opposed to the business uh, manager and the superintendent and the school board themselves to hear from those making the budget requests and, and uh, there to defend their requests. So a couple of quick things in closing, just to acknowledge uh, all the efforts of my staff. I'm blessed to have a professional set of department heads who truly do make my job much easier. The red pen um, isn't needed much at all. They, they take uh, very good guidance in terms of goals and, and always provide very quality, thorough work. Uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased to start with that and, and work with staff. But in particular, Ruth Porter, finance director, uh, Jacqueline Mandrake, who's a, a still fairly new HR director, and my assistant, Colette, uh, really deserves some specific recognition in the efforts that they put forth. Um, I get the lucky, I'm the lucky one that gets to stand in front of you, but they really produce a lot of the work behind this. So really tonight is the ceremonial handoff. Um, I'm tasked with proposing a budget to you, which I've done. Uh, now it, it, it literally is the council's budget to do what you will with it. Uh, through deliberations, review, and ultimate adoption. And upon adoption, you really hand it back to me and say, Mr. Manager, now administer this budget within these confines. So on behalf of staff, and I think I can speak on behalf of the sc my school colleagues, our purpose now over the next several months is to be in assistance to you, to provide you the information and advice and guidance as you, as you wish and desire, uh, to help you get through to that point of adoption. Um, so as was mentioned, um, we're not going to waste any time. Uh, the, the Finance Committee meets next Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., to begin their detailed review. Um, I'll let um, Councillor Holbrook speak to his, his chair, but I'm sure uh, I know those meetings are open to the public. And uh, in the past, members of council beyond the committee have come and been part of that process, too. Uh, that is really where the detailed discussion and conversation occurs. So if you're interested, even in a particular department, um, look at the schedule, find out when they're scheduled, stop in to see that meeting, uh, and I think you'll, you'll find that there's a wealth of information that's shared at those, at those, uh, those sessions. So with that, that's my presentation. I'm pleased to answer questions you might have tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
question. Yes, we'll have our, our work cut out for us, I think, this year. <laughs> um, certainly, yes, I just want to reiterate, um, all of our finance committee meetings are certainly open to the public. Um, and I would encourage any counselor, um, you know, if you can, to, you know, pop through or, or at least catch them. Um, before I, uh, what I'll do is in a moment I'll just go around and ask if, you know, individually if each of you have any questions. Um, one thing I did just want to, um, and thank Tom as well, um, I had kind of specifically asked, as you kind of talked about earlier, um, there is a page um, within Chapter 1, I believe. Um, none of these positions, as you stated, are included in the budget, um, but I do caution um, the municipal side of, of the equation has um, quite frankly held the line for the last five years. We've postponed all hiring plans and staffing plans. We haven't filled positions as, as you know, folks have left. Um, and, and at this point, it, it's five years off, more or less. So um, I had asked him to come forward with, you know, things that are um, significantly important at this point. We do hear, you know, the whispers and rumors of things that are perhaps um, in, in dire need at this point. Um, so. I would really appreciate from, from the council as well to, for each of you to take some time and to look at that list, you know, employee list and send some feedback to us as a finance committee um, because some of these positions are, you know, di direly needed. Um, certainly, you know, our patrol plan has been put off for several years. Um, our firefighter EMS plan, again, we, you know, there's, there's direly needed. Um, we're dispatching at, you know, we are responding to calls, but we're dispatching other, out of other buildings um, because our volunteerism is just, you know, it's dwindling to, to nothing. Um, unfortunately, people work, so they can't volunteer. So um, I would really appreciate, again, like I said, if you could review that and, and kind of get those thoughts back to me so that we can kind of, you know, have a clearer picture at finance level if there's interest to move forward with some of these positions um, and that we can make that proposal um, to you with, with a little heartburn. <laughs> so um, with that, uh, we'll start on this end. If there's any counselors that have any questions of, of Tom at this point, uh, not that he's got all the magic answers yet, but um, we'll go ahead and start with you, Kate. Um, I actually just, I don't, I think it's, it's fair. yeah, it's very thorough, um, as it was last year also. Um, it's a lot of information, and I definitely want to take some time to go over it before I voice my, oh, my <laughs> I mean, obviously, clearly looking at it first glance, I, I wasn't excited about it, um, more so with the school side of it, I'm not going to shy away from that. Um, because I do know, and, and from talking to Tom and from talking to Jess, that there has been, um, our, we've been waiting a long time to make some of these changes, and they need to be done. Um, so I think it's, uh, yeah, I need some time. I need to, <laughs> I need to kind of go over it and, uh, yeah. and figure it out. And I, and I will be at that school workshop because I have some questions for them. Ed? Any questions? Um, the these positions that you were just talking about, mm -hmm. they're not included in the budget, or they no, are. They are thirteen they? of the fourteen I have included. Oh. They are included. I, I've done a number of things to try oh, to yes. uh, limit the pain, uh, delayed start dates. Um, five of them I should mention. I think I touched on it, but I glossed over it. Five of the thirteen are fully reimbursed by someone else. Mm -hmm. Two by the school and three by Old Orchard, should that move forward. Uh, and the other ones do intend and, and do actually reduce other costs that have been in the budget, whether it's over overtime expense or part-time hours. Um, and again, we'd, we simply look for the opportunity to have a detailed conversation about each and every one of them. Um, and, and I'm thankful that the Finance Committee kind of gave me the, the courage to include them so we can have that conversation. Are those tempering factors built into the budget? They are, yes. Uh, for instance, I believe for the positions I, I've scheduled to start April 1st, um, that's uh, due in large part to lessening the pain in this next fiscal year, but it also is a reality of um, challenging recruitment time. It mm. takes time to hire people, mm. um, and, and particularly in public safety, there's an extensive process, months and months of recruitment. So. Uh, that's not ideal, but it's certainly workable from our perspective. Is the SRO the uh, one that you're calling? Uh, that's one of the ones fully reimbursed by the school. 
So it's just coming out of another part? No, I shouldn't say. It's not reimbursed by the school. Um, okay. They need to defend. It's their request. It's reflected in our budget. It's not fully reimbursed by the school at this point. And we have our reasons for... Okay, so it's, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's going to be on the municipal side as well as the school side. Okay. It is, but it, it, it is their request. Right. That's a school resource the, officer. Yeah, for, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's our yes. school resource officer. And as school I understand, that would... Officer for Wentworth. Uh, right. The intention would be for a third school resource officer to, be, uh, to reside at Wentworth School. Ah, there it is. Um, the only one that I could say, because I said teach me to skim a, skim a book <laughs> in a meeting, um, the only one that's not is the purchasing agent, if I'm reading that's that correct. correctly. Okay. Other than that, those positions are all found within, within the departments. Yeah, and that's the one position that I stand before you, and, and that may produce the most savings to us. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think, and the Finance Committee reiterated this just last time we met, it really should be a shared position with the school. Uh, frankly, I need to do a little more legwork to um, better understand how that would best serve both entities. And so I include it here so we don't lose sight of it. But I intend over the course of the next months or year to really kind of lay the groundwork for this to come forward as a shared position because I think it's, it's really uh, tailor-made for that kind of approach. Um. Ed, did you have any other questions? Um, well, I just want, want to make one comment. Mm -hmm. The proposed tax rate increase um, pushes the, the rate increase of, over the past five years to almost 30 percent, whereas the CPI is only 8 percent. So. Everybody's going to have to deal with that because that's outrageous. It's outrageous. We got to do something. We got to figure out some way of weaning some of these dollars. That, but some parts of it we can't. <laughs> well, we'll have our work cut out for us at the Finance Committee. So, um, and, and Jim? Jim? Well, I guess I want to address first the, the $300 up with the people. A lot of people don't have it. My phone is rung off the wall this week with people that are moving out of town. It's getting too expensive to live here. Now, once in a while, you're going to get that. But I've, I've never, in my three years, I've never had as many phone calls as I have this week. And I, I, I tend to agree that the money's got to come from somewhere, but it can't, we, we can't be putting out that amount of money. My own personal taxes have more than doubled in 10 years. I've never had that happen in any other town that I've lived in. Never. And it really makes no difference where the blame is, because that doesn't fix it for now. We've got to deal with what's now and what's present. Um, I honestly think that it's a little backwards. I've never seen it in any other towns where the school superintendent makes a considerable amount of money more than the town manager. I say and hope I don't get snowballs thrown, but that's really the way I look at it. And so I get tired of the school's department just saying, oh, we got a contract, we got to do this. Well, that's great. But it's going to be workable within the town where you're living. I've seen it with Mike's department. People not having raises in how many years? Three, four, <clears throat> six? No. Have they had not raises? Have they not had raises? No, there, there have been modest increases. There was one year where there were none, but there have been modest kind of cost of living based raises. Modest. 
keyword. Mm -hmm. Sort of goes along with fair and reasonable. And at this point, I don't think the school side of the budget is fair and reasonable, given what we're talking about as far as what people have to pay for. And I don't know whether we need an eraser or a marker. <laughs> we're going to do something of some sort. Thank you. Okay. Jim Marie? I do have a question. Uh, Tom, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just has to do with uh, maybe I'm missing it in here. You had an interesting chart, the tax rate comparisons since I think it was 2005 or whatever. Is it in this book somewhere? I just didn't see it because I thought it was interesting. It shows that yes, that one. It, it's not, but I'm, I I'd can very easily produce it. Sure. Yeah, I'd love to have it because part of what I would like to look at and analyze, and I'll throw it out here. I don't expect you to answer it at the moment, but like for example, I know it's 2010. We had a zero percent, mm -hmm. um, and back in 2006, if I'm reading that correctly, you had a decrease of 34.83 percent. Of course, you also look, and that corresponds to you know what's going on in the economy and whatnot. Sure. So I'm wondering too, how much is I'm going to call it the rebound effect of when you don't have an increase that, you, that you've got a rebound effect of it's going to catch up to you later, and how much of of what's been going on in the last three years. I know it's a combination of a number of factors, but is that rebound effect? Well, Things are catching up to 2006 was, a, was the first year after a town-wide reval, so there was a okay. massive adjustment to the tax rate, but value went up. And, ta and real estate was, that's the height of the that real the estate boom. market, yep. too. Right. Uh, you know, what's not shown on here, and, and this is intended really to show the two factors that affect tax rate. How much is your town worth? Right. And how much do we need to raise? The, mm -hmm. It's that simple. Right. Those two, those are the two variables in the tax rate con the calculation. What's not shown is what's happened to revenue over time, mm -hmm. non-property tax revenue. And I'm quite sure what you'll see, uh, the, if you were to graph them side by side, you'll see uh, kind of a, a, a cross, if you right. will. Revenue is going down and property tax is going up. Okay. Um, and certainly expenses would follow a similar track as well. It was just an interesting yep. thing. I'm that, pleased to provide that. Yeah, that, that caught my eye. And just to, as a general comment, again, you know, I thank everyone for putting this together. Obviously, I'm going to pick at it. I've already started. Things are jumping out at me, and I'm like, okay, what's this, what's this? Um, I, I, I'll say it publicly. I was disappointed when I saw the school budget number. Now, I'm just going to say that because I haven't looked at what they're looking at, but um, I know I had a discussion with the superintendent <clears throat> after I was elected, and we had talked as a council about what our expectations were, um, and, you know, I got the answer, and whatever, and, and I'm an educator. Um, I believe in public education, um, but I'm disappointed in the 10% number, so I'll be real interested in looking at that. and. I'm hoping I get to the April 5th if I don't have to teach a class. I'm supposed to be teaching a class that morning, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it for me. No? Uh, first, I, I want to applaud the uh, town departments over the last five years and Tom's leadership for many of those years uh, for what you've been able to get the town through uh, for pretty flat budgets. And I think that should be recognized, that uh, none of this increase is the result of the town side of the budget. That's about 30, 35 percent of the budget, so, but that, that is quite an accomplishment. Uh, it also puts us in a position where we have put off for many years uh, expenses that were intended to be incorporated into the budget as the town grew as uh, things wore out, uh, as uh, people needed to be replaced, uh, and we haven't done that. So uh, there, there comes a time when you have to do certain things. But uh, I think all of us, all seven of us, were in agreement that we were striving for a flat budget. <clears throat> and so uh, the, uh, to see it, uh, a 10 percent increase in the school's budget in the face of that goal 
and in the face of what we've all experienced over recent years for uh, very accelerated tax increases uh, is very disappointing. Uh, we'll work hard with the school to see if we can work this out. Uh, uh, I certainly grew up in a public school environment, so my father was a principal of a public high school, so uh, I know the importance of a public education. But I also know that we have a town with many people who simply cannot afford these kinds of increases. Absolutely cannot afford them. Uh, and so, um, and it's, I would not say a happy balance. We're going to have to have a sobering balance achieved uh, uh, between those two uh, parts of our, uh, our community. Thank you. Um, I did have a question for you, Tom. Um, I know, and, and I just haven't had a chance to look in here. I, one of the things that I had mentioned um, that I was pretty concerned about, um, both at the workshop um, for goal setting and, and a well again at um, our school, the school finance committee workshop, um, the circuit breaker program, mm -hmm. and, and I was really concerned mm -hmm. because that's our seniors, and that was potentially a two thousand dollar impact to, to our seniors this <coughs> year. Um, on top of whatever tax bill they get. Um, do you have the money planned yes. in here? Okay. Yep. So yeah, $130,000 is programmed in the budget to fund our local program. Uh, for us to have that, however, the legislature needs still to do some things. Um, the word I hear from the legislature that it should be get bipartisan support. It's just taking a while to get through the session. Uh, I don't know if Jean Marie has any uh, further I'll update. Find out. But uh, yes, so we can speed that up. Yes, I, I, that would be, well, I, mean, I have planned, uh, assuming that we will have the local authority to fund a local program. And would that be similar to, like last year, where the benefit was approximately yes. five hundred a household? Or That's correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, how, how did you set that amount? Looking at history, uh, you know, one of the unknowns going forward is because the state changed their program and ours was designed. Uh, first and foremost, if you're eligible for the state's program, you are, are eligible for ours. We have a couple of further thresholds uh, given age and time of residency. Um, but I'm assuming that we, uh, all I can do at this point is look at history. And mm -hmm. we didn't spend as much as was budgeted for that program this year. I think Councilor Blaze was the, uh, the chief architect of a, setting up a reserve account that that money doesn't go back to the general fund. Mm -hmm the fund balance, it actually gets swept into a reserve account. So we actually have, I don't know, about 20,000 uh, bucks sitting in that reserve account should we find ourselves underfunded in the future year. And I think that was a, a very wise and astute uh, thing to do just so we, we don't find ourselves in that predicament. Right. Uh, but a lot of it is predicated on, on, on how we set up the eligibility and just the administration of the program locally, but funding is provided for. Uh, I guess I'll just end with the last kind of comment. Um, I'm certainly not thrilled with, with a 10% increase on, on, on the other end. Um, I think it's safe to say at this point that that doesn't gather the support of the council to, to move that forward. So um, certainly there'll be some um, conversation that will be forthcoming, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so at least we know what we're not going to do. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> So um, with that, and um, just kind of my, my passing comment, um, I'll, I'll leave with the last thought of what I said at the last meeting, too. Um, I want the best possible education for my yes. children that doesn't make my grandparents have to leave their home. So um, with that, Absolutely. we'll end the workshop. There's Thank you. Thanks. Well